Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In the previous episode we launched the Asteroid 3 and lost a Kerbal because we ran out of electric charge and were unable to control the capsule to use the RCS system to make sure that the capsule re-entered pro re -entered properly. This time I've made a few changes as you might expect. First of all, in the meantime since we built that previous rocket we've unlocked some new engines and some new upgrades to engines. So for instance here on these boosters, if when I right click it will show up, instead of using the LR79 we now have, I don't think it's very clear with that, well there's not much of a good background around, uh, I've got uh, the current config to be the H1 for the Saturn 1. Now I would really like the better versions of the engine but this will do, it increases our thrust and the ISP, uh, there are better versions with the ISP, for instance this one, if we can go to it, come on. Uh, actually when I'm clicking on it, it doesn't want to go to it. Uh, bugs. Alright, uh, well anyway, that one has a better vacuum ISP. You'll just have to trust me on that. Um, let me make sure I didn't accidentally go to it. Alright, uh, but uh, the configuration we're on with the H1, the original H1, has better thrust. Okay, so that's what we've got there. So we'll have a better sea level thrust weight ratio. On the center engines, we also have an upgrade. We are using the LR NA, LR89NA 6 instead of the dash 3. So that gives us a little bit more thrust there as well. Up here, we have changed the engine. This is why this is the Astrid 4. Uh, so those were just uh, minor upgrades, but this is a total change of an engine because we unlocked this LR-91, which is the second stage of Titan launchers. Maybe I should replace the bottom engines with this now, since this is the first stage of the Titan, but then we'd just be launching the Titan, wouldn't we? But uh, the other problem with this engine is that it's got uh, configurations unlocked that we may not, it may not be the case that we're supposed to have them. For instance, the Titan C, this, this version, which burns liquid hydrogen. Well, we can't store liquid hydrogen in the tanks anyway yet. We're still trying to get that technology. But, yeah. So, anyway, I went with the LR91, which we can unlock, and we do have the configurations for. Uh, the reason why I switched from the previous engine, which is this RD0124, is that this one has a max thrust of 298 kilonewtons, whereas this one has a max thrust of, uh, this is actually the Vernier thrusters, uh, 444 kilonewtons. Actually, the configuration we're on right now has more than that, it has like, like 480. Uh, we could, uh, un apparently it's unlocked to get that configuration anyway. So, yeah, so that's a significant improvement over this. Now, this one is heavier by a little bit and it burns Erizine and N204 and its ISP is not quite as good as 315 whereas this one has 326. This one also has two ignitions. However, the added thrust will mean that we can make orbit quicker and we will our trajectory won't be quite as horrible as it was with the Astrid 3. So that's what I'm hoping for. And yeah. Now I'll get us to uh, the third stage a little bit quicker. The third stage will still probably have to finish orbit though. Our delta V reading here is not correct. I have no idea exactly how much delta V are in the booster first and second stages uh, because it is just lumping up the boosters and the core stage here together whereas the core stage burns for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. The boosters burn for about 2 minutes. So it's not separating them out. Common problem with uh, MechJeb. Anyway, third stage has not been changed. It is still an RD58 here. And I wonder if we have a better configuration for it now. Hold on. Uh, if the separation motor gets out of the way. I didn't actually look into that. Show you why. No, we lack tech for act the actual RD58. We're still on the 11D33. Okay, so, yep, but uh, it's still there. It's got uh, 11 minutes and 20 seconds. It's going to finish orbit, and then because it has five ignitions, it can relight and take us to the moon. 
Now, as you might expect, considering we lost a Kerbal on the previous attempt to go on a flyby around the moon, I have decided to go with an uncrewed mission first. So we do have an Able Avionics package here with a capacity of 5 tons, equivalent to what the capsule will have when the, there's a Kerbal in. And so with the Agena core we have down here, that... Whoop, hold on. KSP is frozen. Uh-oh, lag. Okay. Um, so with the Agena core we have down here, that's a capacity of 21 tons. And right here is a life support tank, but it is no longer the only life support tank. This is going to have... And because we had an oversupply of oxygen, I've reduced the amount of oxygen here. And that might not... Well, I'll move the life support up when the time comes. But the point is, last time, our the top of our capsule was very heavy. And so I've decided to put half of our life support here on the service module. There we go. And you can see uh, half filled oxygen here again. And also on the bottom here I've got a waste area so that our CO2 scrubber can have room to store the extra waste. Alright, so we've done that. And of course here we have the fuel for our 1 kN thrusters. By the way, those got, got an upgrade as well. They are now tick level 2. So instead of having 198 vacuum ISP, they now have 212. All good there, and the RCS thrusters were all upgraded as well. So this is how it is. Of course, you've noted perhaps that I've also added solar panels to the capsule. Had to tilt them a little bit because I didn't want them actually clipping on the... Well, they're still clipping a little bit on the bottom there. But it's worse if I don't tilt them a little bit. So yeah, uh, the parachutes are configured the same. And uh, hopefully the solar panels will save us from the power issue that we had last time. Uh, there's really no opportunity to store too much more battery power on this portion. I, mean, I guess I could add batteries off to the side, but it's not that good. The capsule itself already has quite a lot of battery life. It's just a matter of replenishing it. Of course, we can't use fuel cells because we can't store hydrogen yet. That's the technology that we still have to unlock. So yeah, the capsule itself has uh, 48,000 electric charge. And I've stored some hydrazine in there for the RCS thrusters. We don't have any other RCS tank. And on the previous version, the RCS tank was here and the life support was on top of it. Uh, I didn't want to store the RCS on top here because, again, because of the center of mass issue and wanting to make sure that the capsule isn't top heavy. Okay, a little bit of VAB lag here, but I think we're ready to go with a test of this. So I'm going to start it building. Our build time... Uh, now, Delta V wise, I'm a little bit concerned because... N not because I think that this configuration should have a lack of fuel, but simply because I don't have an accurate reading of how much we have because of what's happening with the first stage and boosters. Anyway, uh, so this life support situation with both tanks. So we have more than last time, I think, and plenty of space for waste for the CO2 scrubber. Build time seems to be 61 days, so with all the staging checked out, I think we can do that. So launch, build, and there we go. Another attempt to launch a Kerbal to the moon, except this time we will test it uncrewed. Come to think of it, I should probably also get another Mars thing ready. We have a... We don't have a Mars. Oh, we have science data from space around Mars, but not another Mars contract per se. We do have an Earth to Mars transfer. Let me take a look at our contracts. Do we have another Mars contract now? Well, Deimos flyby. Guess I could pick that up. That'd be very interesting. Phobos flyby too. Hmm. We've got an extra build slot is the thing. We've already got quite a lot of rockets just sitting around waiting to be launched though. Jupiter flyby, Saturn flyby. There are many such things. But in terms of funds we don't need very much. Actually what we're really interested in is more science. And the Deimos and Phobos flyby could give us that. But 
maybe I need to build a science launch just to Earth orbit. Okay, so here I have built the All Probe 1, and I've called it the All Probe because I've put every scientific instrument that I could on it. I don't think I need this one because it's a duplicate of the Geiger counter here. Otherwise, I think we've got it all covered. There's no additional science from this altimetry sensor or that one. We've even got this RPWS antenna, which does have a radio plasma wave data logging. And so yeah, a magnetometer there, we've got the camera up top, an orbital telescope, and uh, we've got a film return thing, and since we've got the film return camera, obviously we need to uh, return those, uh, even though you would think that we could transmit the photographs, but whatever. A uh, film return thing, and we've got a little uh, hub here with hydrazine and lots and lots of electric charge, I don't know if you saw that, 326,000 so that it won't run out. And we've got a heat shield there. There's a two meter heat shield. And that's why the RCS is tilted out like that. The RCS on top here is mainly to make it stable during re-entry. Its center mass is actually fairly low. It's around here. Uh, and that's because of the huge tank with a lot of electric charge down here. And uh, here I'm using an Asterisk engine for the first time. And the Asterisk engine is a nice little engine burning Aerozine and N204 and it has a vacuum thrust of 22 kilonewtons. It cannot throttle but it is pressure fed and does not have limited ignitions. So it's basically a really really big 1 kilonewton thruster except the 1 kilonewton thrusters only get 212 vacuum ISP. This one, this one gets 297 and it's got gimbling. So it's sort of better in every way than the one kilonewton thrusters and I think I'll tell you right now this this has possibilities for lunar landings and that sort of thing so it doesn't throttle though that's the problem but neither does neither do the one kilonewton thrusters so maybe anyway we've got the solar panels there extra antennae and then the rest is the Astrid 4 I decided to use the Astrid 4 because it would be nice to uh, test it out a second time before launching a Kerbal on it so we're gonna get an extra test actually I think I'll build two of these all probes and so one will be destined for Kerbin orbit the first one we'll just send to Kerbin orbit and do some science the second one we'll send over to the moon and maybe we'll be able to send it to further locations with the heat shield it could possibly be sent to Mars we'll need to put an extra antenna on it though and probably more power we'll see I've had to move the Agena core down here because uh, we don't have the same inner stage fairing adapter. We have an actual fairing, you know, upper fairing adapter, and that doesn't have the same node configuration. Okay, so that's the idea. Let me get some action groups in, and then I'm going to build two of these. You know, since the All Probe 1 that we are launching into Kerbin orbit won't take too much time, and I'd rather get that done quick and get the science and then use the science to unlock the hydrolox technology that we need so that we can get fuel cells and everything maybe I should I'm gonna do that first oh looks like it takes a lot of time though 102 days well the the Astrid 4 that we're going to launch with the capsule won't take too much after that I suppose okay well I guess that's fair and then uh, we'll have the other all probe come in later. Yeah, I want to unlock Hydrolox technology quickly. And so let's get this, this all probe launched. And also, I wanted to, I plotted a mid course adjustment for the Bilbo probe that we're sending to Venus. And so I, I will be doing that. So probably we'll get to the crew capsule test in the next episode. Let's take care of the all probe first and get some science. I might miss this Earth-Mars opportunity here, or maybe we'll send the second all probe to Mars instead. Uh, well, uh, we'll see. Maybe, uh, have I got extra upgrade points? I have one upgrade point. I could increase the rate on this second build thing, build slot. I'll do that. Okay. All right, so we've got an all probe getting ready. Let's uh, roll that out, and we will launch that.
Okay, here we are. Uh, first test of the Astrid 4 system. First test of the... What was the Asterisk engine? We got a lot of AS sounding stuff. Asterisk engine on the payload. All sorts of interesting possibilities. First test of this particular heat shield. This is a new heat shield I unlocked. And I don't know if these heat shields are actually safe or not. We've only tested... Uh, yeah, we tested a different one, but not this one. That's all I know. It looks a little bit different from the others, too. Okay, so here we go. Ignition. Oh, wait. SAS on. Then ignition. And launch. Alright, upgraded engines and everything. Let's see how it works. Make sure smoke screen. Yeah, 400 particles. As usual. Alright. And over to Smart ASS. The payload is obviously lighter than the capsule heading to the moon will be. So we'll have to take that in consideration when it comes to how the staging works out. Whether how much of the third stage we're going to use is my question mark here. I should use some of my funds to upgrade the facilities around the KSC. I'll look to unlocking some of that, because uh, that takes time too, right? Uh, Kerbal construction time causes the unlocking of the next tier of buildings to take time, so I'll have to look into that. Make sure we get that started. By the way, I did action group all the scientific instruments to the same action group as many have recommended to me before, but I never felt a need to do it until now. We have a lot of instruments on this thing, and we're not going very far with it. We're just going to lower Earth orbit, and then we're going to do all the science. We could go to the moon, obviously. Uh, we might. It might be worthwhile to do some, some stuff. Some of the resettable stuff like uh, the temperature scan and all that from a high Earth orbit. I'll, look, I'll see about that. For now, one thing at a time. Good thing that the third stage can reignite five times. Now, I wasn't able to see what the maximum acceleration at booster step was because it wasn't showing the boosters separately from the first stage in our display. So I'm taking a good look at that now, hoping that it doesn't go too far beyond 4G's, because obviously this is meant for Kerbals, and we don't want the Kerbals to be pushed around too much. Okay, aren't these supposed to go out soon? Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like there was a fuel imbalance. Alright, set. Okay, well, uh, definitely didn't get too high on the G-forces there. No worries. Okay, just a few more seconds in this stage. I think I've built up a healthy time to apoapsis. Not straight too far from the prograde vector. We'll see. seconds. Acceleration is tame. We don't have to turn off any of the engines, clearly. Final second or so. 2 Okay, and ignition. Let's try it again. Ignition. Okay, well, uh, this LR-91 is not one for much of a fuss, is it? No, indeed. Very, 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 very soft. Hmm. Interesting. Let me uh, cycle smart ASS. Just in case it doesn't do the gimbling properly. Not just the gimbling, this has uh, vernier thrusters somewhere, apparently. Those might be it. 
No? I don't know. Okay, anyway, uh, let's get the fairings off. Okay. Onwards and upwards. Now, I said that the probe here is lighter than the capsule, but the fact is not by much. The, I deliberately sized this to 5 tons because we are using the ABLE AVX package here. I decided to take advantage of its full capacity. So, yeah, it's not too much different. We don't have the launch escape tower, so that's one thing. Uh, apparently the... The attachment note on this engine is a little bit weird because we end up with a little gap here. That's unpleasant, but not impossible to deal with. Yeah, uh, so maybe it's not too bad an estimation of what's going to happen with the Asteroid 4. We'll see. Anyway, LR-91 doing fine. Still got uh, four hours, uh, not four hours thankfully. 4 minutes and 45 seconds to go. Okay, that should be fine. 3 seconds. I will switch off Smart ASS and temporarily move to SAS. And... Stage set. And ignition. Very good. We have control. Very important. 19 tons or so, so maybe a ton or so lighter than the other, than the crew capsule version. Alright, antennae, antennae out, solar panels out, I'm not wasting any time on this. Well, it's gonna end up like a stage floating around though, but I guess that can't be helped. Or maybe, maybe I'll deorbit it. Maybe I'll deorbit it. We won't go all the way with it. Uh, we'll use the little asterisk engine to complete orbit, then this will deorbit. I think I might hold off on the lunar flyby mission until we unlock Hydrolox engines. I'm reconsidering this whole thing. Okay, well, it will be a bit of a way. Uh oh. We just lost connection somehow. That's bad. But, hmm. Well, in that case, I won't be able to ignite the next stage, so I might as well use this stage to get to orbit. I don't even know if I can shut this stage off right now. Possibly because Remote Tech is really confused these days. Alright, well, we'll just, uh. We'll go for a higher orbit then, I think. I know Mechjeb can circumvent Remote Tech, so we can still control it completely, but I won't, I'll be good. But uh, maybe I'll just shut it down. Uh, in the old days, it would just shut down when you lost connection, but, but no, apparently not. No such failsafe. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna shut down here. And it works. Oh well, anyway, uh, yeah. I wonder if I can stage. It shouldn't, I shouldn't be able to, obviously. I guess we're in a gap in our communication network. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I can't stage. All right, well, we made it to orbit. We'll hold off on the connection error. We'll hold off on, uh, on doing stuff until we get connection. Okay, we have successful reacquisition of the all probe, and we have information that certain stages were destroyed. The LR-91 stage, as expected. Uh, that's the core stage, the first stage. We did recover the boosters, so it looks like we got the boosters back 4.96 meters per second on those. And one, two, three, four. Okay, so all good there. And this is all other stuff. Okay, all clear on the messages. We've got our communication back. So what we should do now is uh, flip around and deorbit this section. And then we'll make orbit with the asteroid. 
while we can. All right, so um, orbital retrograde and RCS on. We can use the RCS from here, it's fine. We are not concerned. In fact, let's do the science right now before we do the retro burns, just for safety's sake. So all the sciences are being done, as you can see. Okay, so... Right... Eight instruments? How many do we have? Is it just eight? Okay, magnetometer scan. We've got the magnetometer sticking out right now. Good. Alright, transmit that one, because we can get that right away. Geiger counter is useless. Temperature scan we've already done. Micro... micro... micro meteorite detector we have already done. Gravity scan we've already done. Biological sample we've already done. So we should send that higher. Uh, film return, we are going to keep that data and try to bring it back. Orbital telescope observations, we can transmit. So actually, uh, cancel that. Maybe we should go up to uh, high altitude and do stuff from there, yeah. I suppose if I press 3 again to activate all our instruments, the ones that are already expended, like the film return camera, just won't do anything. Okay, we're still in the middle of the burn, but we lost connection again. I think I'm gonna need to do something about our communication system. So I guess in theory, uh, well, I don't know how much power this needs, but it's got solar panels, it's got antennae. This could s help support communications. I don't know if it's got enough solar panels though. I mean this part has more antennae and a probe core, but this one also has a probe core. Okay, well that doesn't look like it's going to be quite enough to give me the... No, it will be enough, just barely. Okay. Well, I'll just let it finish. Okay. Alright, out we go. This thing will be left in orbit and maybe it can provide communication support with all the stuff it has. Okay, we should now be high over the Earth. We have communication. Pressing 3. Okay, so pressing 3 doesn't work. Oh, it does. Okay, okay. Alright. Um, biological sample in space high over Earth we have not done, so we're going to keep that and return it. The orbital telescope observations worked uh, on a repeat basis, so we can transmit that. Magnetometer scan as well. Geiger counter we've already done from here, temperature scan, micrometeorite, I just put those on just in case. Gravity scan high over Earth's water we haven't done before. That's surprising and actually that's biome dependent even from up here so I guess we can do high over other biomes but we won't belabor that point here because we're bound to be over the water for a substantial period of time. Uh, okay, total of 57 right now. Okay. Well, let's just, yeah, let's just decouple that stage. That's its power balance. That's pretty good. I think it could survive. So it will provide communication support. So let's test out this asteroid engine. It does need to have the propellant stable, so that's one thing. It does need ullage, but it doesn't have any ignition limitation, so that's positive. All right, gonna throttle up and ignition and shut down. Okay, so 72 kilometers. I'm going to I'm gonna hold it there. Let's see if that's enough to bring it down and whether this will be safe. Okay, and just in case I lose connection, I'm going to arm the parachutes now. Oh, I've got the action group to four. Yes, they are now armed. And this is going to re-enter as well. I'm going to retract the magnetometer. And that's the only bit sticking out. Did this thing do its thing? I didn't see the radio plasma wave. Maybe. Okay. Well, now they're out. Okay, now. 
Oh, it, we didn't do this one. Okay, let's transmit this data. Here it's just high over Earth, so maybe low over Earth we can do one. But, well, yeah, maybe. Let's see. Uh, uh, no, I'll retract it just in case we lose communication low over Earth. I'm going to retract it and then extend it again once we're ready to do it. We don't want it sticking out when we... Well, right now we're not in re-entry situation anyway. Well, that's easy enough to fix. Let's separate off this stage so that we have our heat shield bare. Okay, now we have our heat shield. We have 20 days worth of battery life, so it's not a problem that we lost our solar panels. Okay. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn on RCS so that Smart ASS will be able to reorient retrograde when we come out of time warp. Okay. How about here doing that uh, radio plasma thing? There we go. Uh, oh, there's just one near Earth. It's not biome dependent. Okay. Transmitting that as well. And then that'll be all set. We'll have to obviously bring all of that back in and then uh, well I think we're pretty pretty well off as far as getting enough science for Hydrolox engines any more observations to be done yes in fact uh, grasslands uh, I'm going to instead of orbital retrograde I'm gonna go uh, surface negative relative velocity that's generally safer Okay, uh, those two antennae on top will probably rip off, but we've got the parachutes ready to go anyway. 72 kilometers may still make us skip out, we'll see. Oh dear. Uh, what just blew up? Um, hold on. Oh, the tank? The tank between the heat shield and the rest of the... Oh, well, this is goners. Well, I guess it's good to know that's bound to happen. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Oh, please, heat shield. Uh, no, no, protect, protect the camera. Oh, I don't think... I think the camera's gone. Protect whatever is there's left to protect. Yes, let, let us sit on top of you, right, like that, kind of. Don't, don't flip around. Just ignore Smart ASS now. We'll go wherever you want to go, I can't even see it. I think maybe if I didn't have that on. Let's retrieve the goo. Yes, we can retrieve the goo. That would be good. I mean, we've still got the controller, but we've got no way... Well, we do have... Well, no, we don't have any hydrazine left. That's interesting. These are... These are hydrazine tanks. Oh, it used up all of that hydrazine, huh? Now, I put that tank on the normal attachment node. I didn't use any... Oh, which got any of the gizmos to move it about, so... That's not good. Normal... I mean, I understand if the... Re fuel tanks explode because I clipped them in somehow. I know heating can work that way for some reason. But, uh, yeah, this wasn't clipped in in any way. Now, interestingly, in, uh, in my Soul System colonization series, I updated Realism Overhaul and Real Fuels to a newer version than is here in this series. And there, uh, heating seems to be a little bit kinder altogether. So I wonder if there's something wrong with this sort of setup and maybe the heating situation has changed between what I have in this version and what I have there. I've had the policy in this series not to upgrade anything more. I, I want it to be a constant state just so that I know what the parameters are. I mean if you uh, if you test out a vehicle you want to know that it's going to work for the remainder of the series, right? I mean, you don't want to suddenly have one mod change things so that suddenly the vehicle that you trusted in earlier episodes suddenly no longer works. 
So there's usually a point in a series where I just have a no more update policy. It's looking like we're not gonna stay in the atmosphere at this point. Oh no, it's also bringing our periapsis down. I have no way of controlling this now. And probably if we let it go around the planet and then come into the atmosphere again, it's gonna lose that heat shield. Besides that, this doesn't have enough electric charge to make a full orbit. It used to, but we lost that tank. That was the one that exploded. So how much science do we have right now? 82. I can't imagine the technology I'm looking to unlock is going to cost more than that. A little bit sad that we couldn't bring the return camera, I mean the film return camera back with those wonderful photographs I'm sure all over the planet Earth, but, but we might have gotten what we wanted out of this. Well, things still seem to be sort of stuck together. Let's see on a full orbit whether that continues. We are out of power. And no, no. Now things are drifting apart. The tiny chance they'll come back together in the atmosphere. No, no, there's no chance. It's fluid away. Okay, it has no protection whatsoever. It is not going to be able to orient itself. It has passed into the atmosphere. Here we go. Brace for explosions. Okay, here we go. A full temperature gauge while well, this realism overhaul, so a full temperature gauge does not necessarily mean that things are going to blow up. Though I don't think we even got a full temperature gauge for that fuel tank. I can't believe I'm seriously thinking that this might survive this at this point. We're not at peak heating yet, by the way. No, there's other... Okay, okay, now we're getting some uh, overheating. Okay. Going like... There's no way this can survive. Right. I think that was the magnetometer which was really sticking out there. Well, we're sort of coasting right along around this altitude. I mean... We haven't flattened out or anything, but still, we're going to be spending a long time between 65 and 68 kilometers, it looks like. we got to bleed off a lot of our speed here. And... Well, nothing else has blown up. Okay, well, we're definitely suborbital. And at normal re-entry velocities for low Earth orbit, The uh, Able Avionics score is still pretty cool from the looks of things. Or no, is that the... I, I can't tell which bar is for which. Maybe this is the heat indicator for... I don't know. I can't tell what the heat indicator for the Able Avionics package is. This one looks like it's too high. But then, I don't see a heat indicator for for it then. Who knew that the Able Avionics package doubled as a heat shield? Doesn't quite explain the parachutes though. The parachutes are pretty cool as well. From the look of things. Uh, these are the outer fuel tanks that contain the hydrazine for the RCS thrusters. The parachutes don't have any sort of heat indicator on them either. Okay, something has finally exploded. I was waiting, but what was it? Oh, the Commutron 16s. No, those were, those were expected. Those were supposed to ablate. They are not atmosphere safe. So actually it is still going pretty well. 
currently at 4 G's of acceleration, but that's not really a problem for this thing. As far as heat is concerned, everything looks fine. I'm not too sure I'm putting enough bafflement in my voice at this point. But this is truly... I don't know what to make of the thermodynamics of this. Looks like we might have passed 9 G's. Sometimes that little indicator on the side of the nav ball isn't quite as accurate as the number in the F3 dialogue, so we'll see. It's coming, coming down here. F3, 9.2. Okay, so it was pretty accurate. 9.2 is harsh. Not a question. Without electric charge or any connection or anything, can the parachutes deploy? Now, this is probably going to flip around so the biological sample capsule will hit the surface of the water first. Not the ideal situation. Okay, let's see. Parachutes. Will you... Yes, you will deploy. And yes, this is going to flip around like that. Okay. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to a measly 2.6 meters per second. Well, even with the goo container facing down, I think it's going to survive quite easily. Okay, Kraken avoidance going back to 1x time warp as we approach the surface. Okay, and will it stop wobbling? I don't have any RCS or anything to stop it. Got it. Well, wasn't that full of surprises. We got the biological sample back. We got 13 signs from it. We recovered those parts. Not for very much, actually. Let's see the tech tree. Okay, so the so we've got staged combustion, mature orbital rocketry, it's here. Early Hydrolox engines, that is the key to our success, I assure you. And uh, here we have the LR87 LH2 that I've been avoiding using. They have, uh, technically it's already unlocked under one of the engines, but I didn't attempt it. So yes, research. Okay, 169 days. Well, we are going to move that up, I think. I think it's probably more important than whatever we've got queued now. Especially since, again, it gives us the ability to store hydrogen, which means fuel cells. So, miniaturization is nice. Early Hydrolox engine is nicer. So, upgrade points. Building rockets really quickly isn't really a barrier right now. We aren't uh, really facing too many problems there. So I'm going to add to our science speed. Let me take a look at, not, not inside our, not inside, I want to check about upgrading. So this uh, Kerbals can only disembark on Kerbin. We're going to upgrade that so that they can do EVAs. That's only 75,000. Okay, facility upgrade re requested, so that's got to take 145 days there, so we're going to have to wait for that. Um, space plane hangar, still haven't found much use for it. We have flight planning available there. I don't need to increase max active contracts to unlimited. Tracking station. We could get asteroids if we upgrade that. Here we have a max vessel weight of 700 tons. Well, eventually that's going to be a little bit irritating. It's got to take a million to upgrade that, though. Guess we'll wait on that. There's absolutely no benefit to upgrading the vehicle assembly building. Okay. 
So I guess we'll leave that be. And I don't care about strategies. All right. So this is the situation. I'm going to... Uh, our contract for crude lunar flyby is in 614 days. This early hydrox engines unlocks in 167 days. I think we should move that along. I'm going to spend some funds. And I'm going to add more science capacity. Well, 149 days. It's not that much faster, but it's better. Okay. So, I might rebuild the Astrid 4 with Hydrolox engines. I'll see whether I want to wait for that. The first thing we'll do next time, though, is take care of the Bilbo's maneuver here so that we can get it over to Venus. And it's going to meet Venus in 43 days or so. So, we'll probably be taking care of that first even before we try and launch deep. Well, this asteroid is only going, it will finish in eight days. So we could take care of that while the Bilbo's en route to Venus after its mid-course plane change. Okay. All right. Anyway, so that is the idea, folks. And I'll just uh, call it here for this episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.